Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Having a blast out here at the range today shooting this Colt government model. This one is chambered in 22 long rifle. And it's made by Walther over in Germany under license from Colt. There are several of these 22 long rifle chambered 1911 style pistols on the market, but this is the only one licensed by Colt. And you can tell they've done a great job on this thing. I'll show you the case. This thing comes, this is not my pistol. This belongs to my friend Steve. He sent it over to the channel for me to share with you guys. And I've gotten several requests to see this pistol in the comments of my other 22 videos. But you can see the Colt logo there and Colt on the identification sticker here. Uh, done a really good job on this pistol. I'll show you the controls. See the, the slide catch there got your safety here very positive mag release fully functioning grip safety if you don't have that pressed with your grip and it I haven't had a problem with not pressing it but if you don't have that pressed the gun will not fire so a five inch barrel you can see looking at the muzzle end that is definitely a giveaway that it's a 22 and this is the 1911 a1 version they offer this in several different versions i know they offer a gold cup with the uh, newer sights and stuff on it and they offer a rail gun so they offer this in different versions but this is the traditional 1911 a1 style and you can see that you can see in the sights you know just plain gi style sights uh, done a really good job of making this thing as authentic as they could while making it into a 22 LR. Here's a look at the magazine. I've seen others complain about this magazine, particularly about the thumb saver on the side. 
Now you don't have to use that thumb saver. You can you can load your uh, rounds in just like a a center fire pistol magazine. But the way I use this thumb saver, I use it with my index finger of my off hand. I'll just pull it down just enough to drop a round in, release it. Just enough to drop around in, just enough to drop around in, and so on, until I get the magazine capped off. And these hold 12 rounds. They do offer these, of course, in uh, with 10 round magazines for those states where 10 is okay, but 12 is too many. I always find it funny where they draw these arbitrary lines at, you know. Now that ammo, you've probably noticed, is all different kinds. And that's what I've been shooting today. I've been shooting through my ammo that, uh, my mixed up stuff. This is stuff that, you know, I've gotten elfing underneath my truck seat, uh, elfing under the couch, stuff my wife gets out of my pockets when she does the laundry. She's got a jar that she throws my ammo in. I'm terrible about leaving stuff in my pockets. She fusses at me all the time. But shot about 300 rounds of this mixed up ammo. And it's got... Uh, golden bullets it's got thunderbolts it's got uh, federal it's got uh, what else does it got it's got a few uh, remington vipers in it it's got a lot of different bulk style uh, bulk package ammo thrown in there and it, this thing gobbled it all up ate everything i didn't have a single malfunction i i like to show you guys malfunctions on video and i actually I was hoping to get some. I know some people, or I believe some people, edit out their malfunctions. That's one of my favorite things to show you guys. That's some of the character of the gun is showing that, you know, none of them are perfect. You'll have malfunctions with any of them from time to time. But through what, everything that I fed this thing today, I haven't had a single malfunction to show you guys. So that's going to make the video kind of short. I'm not going to have a whole lot to talk about. We'll do a trigger pull on the trigger pull gauge. The trigger's kind of heavy, but clean. You know, trigger, people talk about a light trigger. A trigger being light is not the only important thing. You gotta have a good trigger, it breaks clean. Uh, over travel sometimes a problem. Let's put a empty case in the chamber. I don't like to dry fire my rim fires. I know some of them are perfectly fine to be dry fired. I get yelled at it with, in all caps whenever I do this. You don't have to put a uh, empty case in there. It's fine to dry fire. I get that, but I treat all rim fires the same because some of them are not okay to be dry fired. So I just make it a habit that I just treat them all that way. Show you guys the trigger pull. I've got to make sure to have that grip safety depressed. What we got six pounds one ounce so about a six pound trigger let's see see if that drop this back in there and i'll show you the reset so here's the pull again it's about a six pound pull And here's the reset. So very short reset. Uh, not much over travel. There's a little there. Uh, no creep hardly. Just a little bit. Pretty good all around trigger. Don't let the six pound number throw you off. Uh, it don't have to be a three pound trigger to be a good trigger.
So takedown is very 1911-esque on this pistol. As always, you want to make sure you're clear. I've got nothing in the chamber, no magazine inserted. We want to turn our press, press on your recoil spring cap. Turn your barrel bushing to the right. Now be very careful because this thing will take flight on you. This little spring cap will. So there's that. Here's your recoil spring. Now turn your barrel bushing all the way the other way. And it'll pull right out. Now back your, back your slide up. Press your slide catch out. This thing's pretty stiff. It hasn't been taken down very many times. But you can always take something and push on it from the other side if you need to. So there's that. Now the slide should just come back and up and right off the barrel. You can see it's got a, a fixed barrel. Again, threaded. Here's your guide rod. Guide rod is a metal guide rod. That's as far as you really need to take it down for cleaning or anything. <laughs> Look at that. Pretty neat looking firearm. And you can take this uh, cap off and this barrel shroud and then pull the barrel out here if you needed to. But uh, don't really see any point in doing that. That's about as far as you need to go. So reassembly, just the opposite. We'll put our slide back on. You want to make sure the hole's not blocked by the guide rod. Put your slide catch back in. Bring the slide forward. Engage your safety to hold the slide in place. Drop your recoil spring in. Or hold up. Let me put this barrel bushing in first, sorry. Twist it around, out of the way. Recoil spring on. Recoil spring cap. Now just move the bushing over, bam. We're back in business. This pistol has an aluminum alloy slide and I believe it's a zinc alloy frame, but it's a, it's a metal gun. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. Great little pistol. I don't care if you're a new shooter or you've been shooting for years. Uh, if you're a 1911 fan, if you don't even like 1911s, this is a good little 22 pistol. I really like it. Appreciate Steve for sending it over. I also wanted to show you guys just a, a quick glance at my new shooting bench. Uh, I'm letting it season out a little bit. I'm going to put some deck stain on it, and then we're going to concrete it into the ground over here. But the same guy that owns this pistol built this bench. So really appreciate him supporting the channel. And all the materials for this shooting bench, every penny came from Patreon. So uh, really appreciate my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Can't wait to get this in the ground and start doing some different testing. Uh, I know I've got a slug video I'm going to test here just, just as soon as I get this thing in the ground. And I've got some other stuff 
uh, that I want to test. I can do some accuracy with. You guys have watched the channel for years. I always do that stuff from prone on a shooting mat. This is one heavy duty table and I think it's going to be a big improvement. So appreciate, appreciate all my subscribers, all my viewers, all of you guys that take the minute to, to just leave a comment in the comment section. All that stuff helps. And of course, I want to thank my Patreon members for, you know, that dollar a month, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is. Some of you guys are going way beyond that. Uh, just blows my mind, really. I really appreciate the support, and it's going for good things here on the range. After I do this bench, I've got some backstop improvements. I'm setting up a pistol uh, place to shoot nothing but drills over here on the side. I'm going to build me a backstop for that. So, putting all that money back into the range. Uh, my camera gear is holding up. Thank goodness. I went through a through a spell there for a while where it seemed like I was having to buy a new piece of camera gear, microphone, something. I was tearing something up, it seemed like every week. So things are finally squared away in that area. I can start focusing on actual range maintenance and stuff. So uh, really appreciate you guys. I'll talk at you again soon.